You're muted. Hello. What's up, yo? How are you? I'm fantastic. Yourself? Um, I am doing quite well. I just got done working out. Nice. Yeah. I'm sticking with it. I'm doing the right thing for myself. <laughs> How's your day been? That's all right. It's good. Yeah, it's all right. Got a... Uh, I got things going on. I got too many things going on is what it is. <clears throat> That's all good. Too many things? Feeling overwhelmed? A little stressed out? Mm, no, not quite there. I just I have a full plate. Yeah. Um, which is good. I, I'm intrinsically rewarded or motivated, meaning... It's things outside of like how I feel about stuff that motivate me to do shit. And it's also mm -hmm. things outside of me that motivate me to do the shit. <laughs> it yeah. works. It's all good. I got, I got some good things coming. Um, we'll talk about, we'll talk about that stuff on our call. I think it's this next week, right? Cause we didn't, it wasn't this week that we talked or was it? Uh, it was, last it, was week. it was this week. Mm hmm. Okay, well, we'll talk. We'll talk about that stuff. Um, influencer marketing, real quick. I want to get a sense of this is something that you do, that you've done, that you've helped people with, like whatever. Like it's your jam, right? Yeah. And are you talking specifically like how to reach out to people and pay them to? do the stuff to promote your shit and all of that influencer marketing or tell me. No, what I call influencer marketing is just strategic relationships. It doesn't necessarily involve, involve payment, but it does involve getting other people with audiences to promote your things. 
Good. Build relationships with them, get them to endorse you and things of that nature. Cool. Influencer marketing, traditionally, the last few years, as is always, is has been a transaction-based relationship, which mm-hmm. is what reaching out to an influencer on Instagram and paying them for X and blah, 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 blah. Essentially, yeah. that's going away, which is, mm-hmm. I think, why you and I kind of get along is because we... I mean, like, really, I don't think I'd pay Gary V to like shout me out. Like, if I can't get that without paying for it, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, no. <laughs> I dig it. Defeating the whole purpose. Um, now, anyways, cool. So, you and I are just going to have a conversation about this. And I'm going to. I'm going to kind of just like lead you down that conversation and has you explain it to us. I'm with it. Cool. Cool. Did you go out today? You went to a birthday or something or a wedding or something today, right? No, that's next weekend. That's next week. Yeah. One of my friends is surprising my best friend with an engagement or proposal, rather. Hopefully an engagement will come after, but I don't think anyone has any doubts about that. <laughs> yeah. Nice. That would be quite the surprise if she said no. Yeah. Um, mm, I, mm. <laughs> yeah, that would suck. Oh, man. How's everything else? Oh, you're not going to fucking like pull the 40 minutes into it. All right, Landon, have a good night. I'm out of here. Not 40 minutes in, but I am borrowing my best friend's room right now. This isn't my room. So we live together. She's my roommate as well, but she's like a sister to me. And this is her room. She has like the best room in the house. She has the master. Right now she's working out. Typically her night involves, her nightly routine is work out about 45 minutes. She'll probably be done within the next 15. Then smoke a little bit of bud, cook, make dinner, eat a super late dinner, and then she'll go to bed. So we probably have like a solid hour-ish, hour and a half. Cool. That'll work. Yeah. That will work. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> oh, I get to meet up with Matt Staten tomorrow. Yeah. So he yeah. comes there. Mm-hmm. He's in Ohio, right? Yeah, he's only a couple hours away from me. I was in Cleveland a few weeks ago, and we, he and I were supposed to meet up, but I ended up staying on the side of town that I guess was pretty far away from him. I wasn't in town to see him. I was just like, well, since I'm here, let's like make some time for each other. And we found out that we were like 45 minutes away from each other still, and we were like, all right, not worth it. It was like snowmageddon out. We were like, we're not doing this. Yeah. <laughs> if you were coming from an, from the other part of the country – 45 minutes is, is yeah. worth it, but you live in the same state. It's like, right. We will connect. Right. It's like, I'll see you next time. See you. So, but yeah, he'll be down tomorrow. He, uh, he booked me for some day long coaching. It was really funny how it happened too, because I posted one of my like, let's connect threads. Like what connection would take your business to the next level. And he pitched me right on the thread. He was like, I would like to connect with Tori Reed in person, drinking coffee, having her coach me on my messaging and my positioning for Morvago. And I said, all right, let's make it happen. Boom, so, bitches. That's how that shit's done. Yeah. <laughs> nice. And I fucked with him. I told him, uh, I told him I'd come up to Cleveland at first. I was like, I can come to you here's the price i was like but the price bumps up another couple hundred bucks unless you show me the best taco spots in cleveland because apparently they have like really good taco spots that's He's hilarious like, we have some good taco places <laughs> funny <clears throat> i love tacos me too one of my favorite things for sure in fact this last year i'm like not even kidding for four months straight we had one other dinner <laughs> one. And I think it was because we went somewhere else. 
like Ash got into this crazy, the neighbors were doing the Taco Tuesday thing. We went over there a couple of weeks in a row, and then it was just fucking tacos and everything. From there on out. They're so good, man. Like, And you never get tired of them. I don't think I've ever gotten tired of eating tacos. You can make a million different kinds of tacos. Yeah. You know? I had a fajita bowl tonight. <laughs> I made myself a bit. Actually, I made myself, yeah, a fajita bowl. But then I put like a portion of it in a wrap because I still wanted the wrap portion. Mm -hmm. Ash was hollering something about tacos for the win or something. <laughs> she heard us talking, she, tacos for the blah, blah, blah. All right. <clears throat> Ready to do this? Yeah. So I'm going to do the little normal intro. And then I'm going to jump right into, okay, who the fuck is Tori Reed for the people that don't know who Tori Reed is and just do say whatever you want. Um, and then we'll get into the influencer marketing thing. Um, I won't like really put you on the spot, but, um, I really just want to have a conversation with you, me and the people here and, uh, we'll see where it goes when you're ready to like bounce, just mm -hmm. say, all right, cool kids have a good one. And if I decide I want to stay on with whoever's on, Sweet. If not, whatever. Okay. Um, let's do this. Sounds good. I'm going to turn my volume down on my phone so I pull it up. Can you hear that music in the background? Can I hear music in the background? Yeah. No. Should I? No. Cool. I was interviewing um, Amy Bernier earlier. What up? And my dogs went fucking nuts. <laughs> Your dogs went fucking nuts? Yeah, in the middle of the interview, they just started barking out of nowhere. Like, I had to, like, stop. <laughs> they do that. Come on, Facebook. Give me a fucking volume button. Uh-oh. There we go. Live video interrupted. Hmm. What's up, Google Army? How are you doing? My video feed on my end has frozen. I don't know if it has for the rest of you guys. Tori, can yeah. you see us? Are we frozen? Yeah, we're frozen. Hmm. Up Interesting. Right oh, Brittany said she can hear us. She can hear us, but the video is... The broadcast has been paused. It should resume shortly. Hmm, this is interesting. I haven't had this happen lately. Live video some interrupted. People, some people can still see us. <laughs> like a lot yeah. of people are commenting. I can I still can see the comments. See Let's see what Ash says. Brittany says the video is fine. It's not frozen. Okay, cool. All right. Well, let us know if that changes because mine is still frozen. So, NJ says it's not frozen. <laughs> Sweet. Cool. What's up, crew? Welcome to Friday Night Live. Smash the fuck out of that like button. Smash the fuck out of the heart button. If you're new and you've got us on speakerphone and you've got little ones around, understand that I leverage the full spectrum of our language. Welcome to Friday Night Live. This is a Joe Rogan style show, typically. So, heed that. Cool. Yeah, everybody says it looks and sounds fine. Cool. I'm going to restart my window, Tori. I'm going to throw you to the wolves for a minute. Tori, for those of us who don't know you, who are you? I will be right back. Got you. What's up, gorillas? Uh, a lot of you guys do know me. Um, but for those of you who don't, my name is Tori Reed. I am a content funnels expert, which is something we will get into, I'm sure, a little bit in this interview. Um, but more importantly about who I am, I am, I don't even know how I would describe myself, honestly. I, I typically leave that up to others. My audience would say about me that I'm relatable, I'm pretty laid back and chill. Uh, my text banter is bananas. I really like tacos. Landon and I were just talking about that. And I know a lot about marketing and words and things so now that's it's <laughs> now it's frozen 
now it's frozen for real. Yep, now it's frozen for real. Oh man, I gotta do that all over. <laughs> I'm really what? not good at introducing myself. <laughs> I am I'm going to end the live feed and I'm going to restart it. Okay. Sounds good. I wonder what these tech issues are about. No idea. No idea. Friday Night Live is so lit. Totally. <laughs> Friday Night Live is so lit. Totally. <laughs> Come on, give me a volume button, Facebook. You can do it. I know you can do it. Friday Night Live is so lit. There we go. Tori, you know what? There's a small <laughs> chance that because of the music in the background, Facebook is like trying to determine if they want to or not. I can't hear it, so I don't think they could, but let's try this again. What the fuck is going on, Gorilla Army Nation? Welcome to Friday Night Live. Smash that like button, smash that heart button. Tonight, Tori Reed and I are going to get into influencer marketing, probably a little bit of content funnels and a little bit of relationship <laughs> funnels. So let's go ahead and just start this all over again. Tori, for those of us who don't know you, who are you? What do you do and how do you do it? Okay. Um, my name is Tori Reed. I'm, I live in, I'm based in Columbus, Ohio. I grew up in Maryland, military family, um, born in Hawaii and all that all that jazz. I really like tacos. I'm a content funnels expert. My audience likes to describe me as like chill and relatable. I, I'm good at speaking to people on their level. I'm good with words. I'm good with messaging and positioning and all those things. And I really like to use influencer marketing. So like, I'm stoked to be here with you today and to talk to everybody and hang out with the crew and um, get into this. Cause I think it's, it's really fucking valuable shit and it's fun to boot. <laughs> yes, it is fun. So well, let's just fucking jump right in. Guys, if you've got questions about anything we talk about or something that we haven't brought up yet, go ahead and, and hammer it in the comments. Um, we're talking about influencer marketing. Tori, why don't you give us a, a quick little simple definition of what it is we're talking about? Influencer marketing is when you create um, strategic relationships or you build strategic relationships with other people who are in your general sphere who also have an audience and you guys um, build a genuine relationship, which I'm sure we'll get into in this interview, but it affords you the ability to gain more exposure and, and generate more leads or more audiences and clients for you to bring into your sphere. Yep. Exactly. Now, <laughs> influencer marketing has been a thing that's been done for the last several years as people have built their stage and other people want to leverage that audience that they have built. And typically this has been something that's been done. Um, hey, Bob, you do this thing and, and our stuff is kind of related. I would like to pay you to be able to have you put me out in front of your audience. Is that what we're talking about tonight? No. A lot of people still do that. That especially on Instagram, I see the way that I like to, um, the way that I talk to my students, I'm like, you know, there are plenty of things to leverage other than money. And honestly, when you come into a relationship complete and it's like strictly transactional, it becomes a less genuine, less fulfilling, less authentic relationship. So like you could pay Gary V to shout you out, but Gary V is going to take that money and not actually give a shit about who you are, what you're about. And it's not going to come from an authentic place. And with the day and age that we're in people's bullshit meters are very, very, very sensitive and they're going to pick up on that. Whereas if you have a genuine relationship with someone like Landon and I do here, then people are going to be able to tell and you're going to get um, much better, a much better quality result from that versus the alternative. Right. At the end of the day, kind of the way I believe it should be done is, is relationship first, right? There's a lot of ways to gain all kinds of stuff money is one of those from doing a transaction based thing. The problem with that is, is a, it's typically not sustainable and B, once you stop paying, it goes away. And it's like, what's the point in doing that? Yeah. Um, so what we're going to be talking about tonight really is 
what exactly influencer marketing is, how to do it, and like how to do it. And what we're talking about essentially is strategic partnerships. We're also going to talk about how to define and figure out who it is that you should be looking to in your niche or your market or your vertical or whatever you want to call it that you should be partnering with and why. Um, so keep smashing those buttons, guys. I, uh, I killed Facebook on my computer. We don't normally have tech issues with this. If something happens with the feed or with the video or the audio, let us know. Um, and we're just going to roll into this. So if you guys have questions, post them in the comments and we will, we will keep up with them how to do it and how to do it. Yep. Totally. <laughs> nephew, nephew, daughter, Donna. I was actually going to come on and do that. Um, Joe Rogan does that. What's up freak bitches. And I was going to do what's up weird fuckers. And Ashley's <laughs> like, you should totally do what's up nephew daughters. <laughs> it's fucking hilarious. People are starting to pick up on that, Donna. It's kind of funny. Cool. cool. <laughs> All right. Some of my so-called competitors are actually some of my best friends, and we boost each other up. Yeah, totally, Emily. Okay, so, <clears throat> Tori, this is something that you've been doing and working with and working on for a period of time. Take us back a little ways. What have you done in the past? Like how in, in three sentences, get us up to speed on what you've done in the internet marketing space. And then we can go into the um, influencer marketing. Okay. Three sentences. Sentence number one, I started out. Oh, the dogs are not happy down there. I hope you guys can't hear that. Um, I started out as a freelance writer. Um, and sentence number two, I worked my way up to writing for Lifehacker, Huffington Post, et cetera, which is really where I started to dig into influencer marketing. Um, sentence number three, I have now transitioned all the way from starting out as a freelance writer to owning a marketing agency to now I teach. I'm an expert in my field, so I've changed my position quite a few times. And now I teach people, um, I teach entrepreneurs how to create really impactful messages to attract their perfect audience and inspire them to take action. Awesome sauce. Influencer marketing, somebody who doesn't know what that term means before tonight. How would you tell somebody, or let, let me, let me back up. Who should be doing influencer marketing? Who's everybody. Influencer marketing is just building relationships with people who are like, on your level, all right, so there are three kinds of relationships that you guys wanna build in this entrepreneurship thing, right? And so the first, actually, I forget what group I'm in, therefore, the first being the relationship with yourself, that aside, there are three relationships that you wanna build. Um, the first being with your audience, the second being lateral, peer-to-peer -peer relationships, right? Um, and then the third being vertical. Now, your peers can also be influencers. They'll lift you up. And then the vertical relationships are also people who are influencers. And they'll also lift you up on a more mentor-mentee mentor level. Um, and all of that can result in, I mean, the way I see it, everybody has influence. Like, everyone has influence on someone. Influencers, the way that people define them are just people who have a really strong word of mouth kind of presence, but everybody has a word of mouth presence with someone. Word of mouth is the best form of marketing period. It's social proof. You should always be building your networks and the marketing aspect of it, the exposure aspect of it. If you're bringing value to the table, you're good at what you're due. That's going to come naturally, right? Mm -hmm. But you should always work on building those strategic partnerships, building those networks, surrounding yourself with awesome fucking people in your sphere. Cool. So if we're going the land and route, we're going to build a relationship with them as let's have a relationship. And if the business stuff comes with it later on, that's the cream on the top, which is why we focus. If we're, if we're going after relationships for people we can do business with, we focus on people intentionally who, when we do build those relationships, it just is a natural thing that happens after that. Yeah. How do you start? How how do you start that process? Everybody should be building strategic partnerships, yes. But for those who haven't gone out and intentionally sought people that they could build a strategic partnership with, like you and I have, 
Mm-hmm. What should they first think about before they go out and start interacting with people? That's a really good question. So when I started out, I did it all wrong. <laughs> so I'll tell you guys about the wrong, the wrong way to do it. And then I'll get into the right way to do it. So when I was, um, this is back when I was at Life Hacker. naturally, my editor-in-chief, he was also mentoring me. And he's the one who kind of first started telling me like, hey, reach out to people to contribute to the post, get their input. It's going to be great for X, Y, and Z reasons, primarily for exposure. Now, I didn't think about anything other than, does this person have a lot of followers? Are they in the niche that I'm talking about? Cool, I'm going to reach out to them. I'm going to put their stuff in the post. Now, obviously, it's deeper than that. Um, didn't build any actual relationships with that. And I found that it was actually like really counterproductive in a lot of ways because I would reach out to some people, they would send me back something that I would disagree with or that I didn't feel right about. And I would say, uh, eh, I'm not actually going to include this because it doesn't, it like, I don't like how that makes me feel to promote something or endorse this message. Um, wasted a bit of time later on. I actually kind of like stopped focusing on influencer marketing for a little bit after that. A little later on, once I switched over to um, marketing agency, started building that up, I started to join like masterminds and groups and things of that nature. I didn't really see where it would take me, but there were a couple of like really solid groups that I got into where I started to meet really awesome people. And then naturally those relationships, like I just said, like grew into something more, I think. um, And it was way more fulfilling and the messages that we were putting out there for each other and the way that we were endorsing each other were actually authentic. They were genuine. Um, and so I think number one, the way that I judge it now, whenever I'm going out and I'm looking for people, I just keep an eye open. Number one, number two, um, if you're like actively looking, one thing that I like to do is a lot of you guys. So you guys in this group, you're familiar with the profile funnel, keeping, keeping, uh, keeping tabs on your friend, friends list, making sure that that is targeted or your group or whatever, whatever portal you, you're using for marketing. Um, you can actually ask them, like put a status up and say, Hey, who's your favorite expert in blank? If you're looking for someone specific and if your audience, if you're being careful about attracting the kind of people that you really fuck with on a personal level, then naturally the people that they tell you to go to, you're probably going to like them too. Um, So that's kind of a hack that I use when I'm looking for something specific. Otherwise I just keep an eye out and I have a couple of rules to go by. Number one, do I respect the work that they do? Yes or no. Number two, do I find the work that they do or their mentality or philosophy a little impressive? Are they doing something different, unique that I like? That's number two. Number three, do I actually want to have a conversation with them? Do I actually see myself like liking, liking having conversations with them? If not, then I'm, then it doesn't matter. The rest doesn't matter. So they have to pass all three of those and then I'm down to connect. Oh, I think you're muted. You're muted. You're muted. (laughs) That's crazy. It didn't even, it didn't show on my side. I was still muted. (laughs) So what I said was, Tori, I so love you. And here's why. The third piece that she said was if she's actually interested in having a conversation with you, that person, the influencer. And the reason being is because we don't naturally like everyone, right? In our marketing, you can't talk to everybody because if you're talking to everybody, you're not talking to anybody. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing when you're building relationships, right? It's my barbecue example right? Like Bob may be really cool and, and whatever, but like, eh, whatever, but John over here is like the shit and I want to hear everything he has to say. Um, it, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if Bob's got a bigger audience and a little more influence than John does now, because if I'm not interested in having this relationship with this person, then that shit doesn't matter. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. Especially if you're doing something like an interview like this, like if you're putting yourself in the position to sit down and talk to one another to, right. you know, execute this process of giving one another exposure, et cetera. You definitely want to have fun doing it. Otherwise it's going to, it's definitely going to show like that energy is contagious. It's going to spread. It's going to fall flat on your audience. It's just not going to be worth it. Well, people can tell, right? Um, 
people people can tell, especially in an interview setting like this. Like I've done interviews with people that I've not had a conversation with, but like maybe ten or fifteen minutes beforehand, and they don't. Mm-hmm. There's no generally there's no chemistry there, and um, it doesn't. It's just if you're going to if you're gonna do the dirty, right? If you're gonna go there. <laughs> then you might as well date a little while before you go there because it makes that so much better. And that happens so much more natural. Um, okay. So now you've kind of figured out who it is that you would want to initiate that relationship with. What are your first couple of steps in doing that? And let's, let's go ahead and get tactical and let's get step by step ish. Um, and kind of break it down because this goes right in alignment with what we teach as far as the relationship thing. Yeah. Um, so naturally nine times out of 10, I'll put it this way, nine out of 10 times, the right way to go about it, the more effective, the more fulfilling way to go about it is to just spend some time, like Landon was saying, spend some time in their sphere. So if this person that you want to connect with, um, for instance, has a Facebook group, join their group, bring value to the group, add to the conversation, have fun with them, connect with them on that level. Um, And then once you've made your introduction, you guys have a bit of a relationship going, then reach out to them and offer them something of leverage. Like, and you'll figure out what drives them, what kind of leverage you can offer them. Um, That's nine times out of 10. That's how you're gonna wanna do it. One time out of 10, you'll know you'll have this, I don't know, gut feeling or something where you will see them and upon seeing them and like that first impression, you'll say, oh, I know what I can give them. I can give them this in exchange for this. And you can still reach out to them and kind of offer that up on the front end. I still highly recommend having a conversation with them, an icebreaker conversation with them before actually doing whatever it is that you propose to do on the marketing end. Some people are saying they lost us. Uh Uh-oh. I don't know what the hell the deal is tonight. <laughs> uh, working here. Yep. Okay. And so other people are saying what I think it is. And I could be wrong, but there might just be too much activity going on in general froze for me. Some people are saying it's good. We're just going to keep going. The replay will work. Um, okay. okay. Sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, you're good. I was, I finished. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. People are saying that they can still see us and hear us. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, guys, sometimes that happens because there's so much love and there's so much like, it's just part of the deal. We get a shit ton of engagement on our Friday night live videos. If it freezes for you, it might just be you. So we're going to keep rolling. Um, okay. <laughs> So you've identified who it is that you want to at least go look at to see if you want to build these relationships. You go step into their world and kind of verify what your initial impressions were, right? You're going to validate, okay, I thought I wanted to pursue this person and this person and this person and this person and this one out of four. eh, So you move on and you focus your energy elsewhere. Right. You begin building that relationship. Now, here's one really interesting little thing. And most people, this is, um, this is not, it's totally counterintuitive. One of the easiest ways to initially get influence with an influencer is to give that influencer some influence in front of their own audience. Does that make sense, guys? Okay. So Tori and I are doing interviews with each other, right? We're, we're talking, we're communicating. We've got a full on relationship that's built and going and and whatever. When I come onto her stage and her group, I'm giving her influence because we're talking about the thing that her audience wants to hear about. So I'm giving the influencer influence because I'm giving them some accolades and some admiration and some support about their message in front of their own audience. You don't always have to show up and say, man, I do websites and they're like $9 million, but I'll do yours for free because like, don't do that. Right. <laughs> don't do that. Influencers generally want exposure. It drives them. They want the reach. They want the exposure. So nine times out of 10, you can really just offer them that. Now 
the next thing that a lot of people are going to say to that or that a lot of people in my audience say, so I'm just predicting this, trying to be a little intuitive is, well, I don't have an audience and I don't have an audience as big as theirs. So how can I give them exposure? Um, that's where I do a roundup influencer pitch, like what I did when I launched my group. So when I launched my group, I reached out to Landon and J.R. Revis and Ben Perry and Kim Doyle and other people. I can't remember who I was there that first week. It was a while ago at this point. Mm -hmm. And I told them, I'm like, hey, I'm trying to have an exposure party with all these rock stars. You guys want to do this? I'll host it. Let's go. And I, ha I lined up six interviews for the same week. I put out a little flyer. Everybody was promoting it. The lineup was fucking fire. And then everybody wins. Okay. And so think hard about it. It's not really that hard, but think, don't just settle for, I can't do that because I don't have this thing. You can, right. you can do it. Totally. And for anybody who was, um, anybody who has a small group or is thinking about doing a group and forget all the other pieces that go into it, you're going to go ahead and do it. You should go back and look at how Tori launched her group. She was unknown to many of us, right? And she was kind of known to a bunch of us, but she wasn't like really known. And that's what everybody's situation is typically when they start a Facebook group is, is yeah, I know my 15 or 20 people that I regularly have conversations with, but right. there might be 30 or 40 other people that have seen my name and posts and stuff. But outside that, nobody knows me. Mm -hmm. And this is how you launch a group and, and build an audience. And it's, it's also a really effective way to build a list. So with that said. It's also a really effective way to get the audience that's coming in to respect you as an expert when they see you surrounded by people that they already respect as experts. Mm -hmm. That was a huge word as far as social proof goes. Yeah, that's, uh, what do they call that? Guilty by association that's influenced by association. Yeah, ooh, I like that. Ooh, <laughs> good subtopic. Um, looks like a bunch of people, and even me on my phone, I'm having problems with this um, stopping and starting. Uh, me too. But the replay That's will. So good. I know. <laughs> Such a good well, maybe there's a reason for that. Um, the I think the replay will be will be good, um, and some of these people are still getting it. So. Yeah. Yeah, you're giving and getting reach simultaneous, exactly, simultaneously, yep. Um, okay, well, I don't see and haven't seen a whole lot of questions from you guys. Oh, so that- I see Emily works. has one. Emily said, and that's without inviting people, meaning adding them without their permission, I'm guessing. Yes, never add people without their permission to a group. It's the rudest thing you can do. <laughs> Ever. Never do that. Yep. Mine is Never. Mine on laptop. Yep. Nope. Yeah. Oh, so I think Brandon said this a few minutes ago too. Um, your net worth is your, your network is your net worth. That's a new fancy way of saying, and it's not even that new from a, a network in salesperson's point of view, but it's not what you know, it's who you know. You've got to know what you know well enough to be able to know who you know, but it's always about the good old boys club or the good old girls club when it comes to, you know, becoming a person of influence. It's always in who you know. Yeah. Not only that, but I think I like to, I like psychology and shit. So, you know, that quote goes around, um, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with or whatever the case may be mm -hmm. on a broader spectrum, on a macro level. Um, you really do kind of take after the characteristics of the environment that you put, like you're a product of your environment. So if you surround yourself with, if you start like building a network and surround yourself with people who are focused, um, who are in your niche, who get your thing, not just on an entrepreneurship level, but if your niche is fitness, surround yourself with fitness entrepreneurs who get your thing and what you're doing, you're going to be that much more focused. You're going to be that much more successful because that's, you're going to, we have this natural tendency, right? Even when we, don't try to keep up with the Joneses to be inspired by the Joneses. And that's not always a bad thing. That can be a very good thing that you can use for yourself. Um, so I think that's a lot to do with it too. So growing your network has multiple benefits from multiple angles, in my opinion. 
Mm -hmm. I totally agree. There's a couple of things in here. <clears throat> um, yeah, a bunch of people are having a hard time getting it to play. It is what it is. We're going to deal with it tonight. We're just going to keep trucking. I have the recording of this. So worst case scenario, I've got the recorded video. Yeah. Um, BB says, okay, but genuinely, what do you do if you're not good at peopling? Guess what? <laughs> Neither Corey nor I am very good at peopling. We're good at it because we've practiced it. But what we're saying is not to go people. What we're saying is go find people that you would be interested in building a relationship with that are in your niche. Watch them from afar before you people with them. Watch mm -hmm. them and kind of get a sense of who you think they are. And then it's easy. Our encashment document comes out with the ICA emails. It's build presence to create awareness, which establishes authority. It's a very simple, easy process. Um, so that's, we teach this in the course. I'm not going to go too deep into that. Um, <laughs> Terry says, what is your opinion on doing interviews with the influencers and packaging that up to give it away to grow your group? That's essentially what an online summit is. Um, I did three or four of those early in, in the growth stages of our group. Um, in fact, I was just on one and I've got another one coming up here in a month, I think. They're fantastic because you're basically put on stage in front of a bunch of other people's audiences whom don't know you. As long as those other people and the main subject of that online summit, totally. Now, last year, but more in 2016 and 2015, there were people that would go gather up influencers in their niche, in their marketplace. They would do interviews with them, package that. It was free for two or three days, and then they would close it and sell it. That's essentially what an online summit is. Yes, it works, Carrie. For sure. Steph said it perfect. Don't people unless you love the people. Yep. <laughs> yep. I used cool. to think that I hated peopling and then I found people that I like to people with and now I don't hate it so much. Right. <laughs> I like it much more. <laughs> well, when you're, when you're peopling with people that you can people with, it's not peopling. <laughs> Angelina says your life's not the only one having techie balls headache. Just checked on another one and they're having Facebook is doing some different things. It is what it is. Um, yes. Finding the right people. Uh, let's see here. Okay, yes, Elizabeth, so you're people I want to potentially people with. <laughs> right. Elizabeth, you are correct. And that's how it goes in most Facebook groups. A lot of people come into our world getting clients without being salesy and kind of have a problem with the way we, we run the group. And the reason we do that is because exactly what you just said, most Facebook groups are garbage because mm -hmm. they just let the shitheads be shitheads. Yep. And they don't, they don't, you know, it is what it is. You just got to take your time, find the right groups, ask around to the people that you already like to people with what groups they like <laughs> to people in. Right. And then you put people in those groups. Totally. Okay. So I found people I want to potentially people with. <laughs> yep. Jody said, people stop. <laughs> they don't bring out the band hammer enough. Yep, that's a fact. That's a fact. You're welcome, Elizabeth. This group is different and we love it too. Tori, what do you blog about? I no longer have an official blog, but the act of blogging is just creating content. Um, I do that in my group and I, I create content around entrepreneurship, around creating content. So what I teach people how to do content funnels, um, mindset, a lot of that as well, but just crafting a message. Mm -hmm. Marketing mm -hmm. things of that nature. So let's break that down. Cause you, you said it real quick and I think a couple of people probably got it and understood, but, um, blogging is not just, blogging on a blog anymore blogging Correct. is essentially being a media company creating content mm -hmm. in all so, of the different places that we do it go ahead yeah so when i first started my group um 
I was targeting bloggers. I wanted to teach bloggers how to grow and monetize their blogs and become entrepreneurs or, you know, grow them into actual businesses. But a lot of people, what I noticed real fast, I noticed a couple of things, but one of the things I noticed really fast that turned me off to that idea was that a lot of people that were coming in were under this impression that, oh, in order to blog, like I have to have a blog, this, this website thing, this tech thing, I have to have that in order to succeed. No, you don't. What do you do on a blog? You write. A lot of people create videos, put those on their blog. A lot of people um, upload their podcast episodes, audio to their blog. A blog is just a, a place to lay your content so that people can see it and interact with it and respond to it. Um, you can do that pretty much anywhere on the web these days. So I really didn't, I really did not like that people really felt shackled to that platform and they felt like they could only do the thing on that platform. So though I started out as a blogger, blogging is definitely like in my roots for this whole internet marketing thing. Um, I don't abide by that. I'm never going to tell anybody that they need to blog. I do think that everybody pretty much needs to create content though, and you need to do it well. Mm -hmm. They're all saying, no, the video died. Sorry guys. It's Facebook. It ain't us. I thought it was us, but it ain't us. We're going to keep going. <laughs> um, which might actually be really funny because we're going to get into a couple of things that you and I are working on and like kind of <laughs> rolling out and they're going to catch little bits and pieces of it here. And they're going to be like, fuck now I have to go back and watch that. Damn it. Now I got to know what they said. Uh, so we, we kind of got into that. Everybody needs to create content. You and I are doing a very, very, very similar um, strategy and structure to market. Mm -hmm. And you said it at the very beginning. Um, you are a content funnels expert. Yes. Explain that. Okay. Um, so a lot of you guys in here are coaches, consultants, ser service providers, basically. And when you're going through the traditional sales process that you've been taught all these years that you have to do, you, um, you find yourself reaching out to a lot of people, getting on a lot of discovery calls. I still saw a post the other day of somebody asking about cold calling and cold emailing. You guys have, you know, these, um, these thoughts, these, these, to use Amy Bernier's words, these stories that you think are like, that's how things have to go. Content funnels really like eliminates all of that. Um, it allows you to have the perfect conversation, right? The perfect conversation to attract your perfect ICA. And all you have to do is put that conversation in place one time on the web. And I have my way of doing it. Landon has his way of doing it, but we're both doing it and you get to automate that process and people qualify themselves. And then by the, by the time they reach the end of the funnel, you either know that they're for you or they're not. And that's that. And they can, you can also sell them right in the funnel um, and solidify that relationship with whatever you want to sell to them. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty much what a content funnel is. And when you, you put it up, you'll probably test it. I mean, we're in love with the process. So we're going to test ours and refine them forever. And my hope is that everybody does because there's always room for improvement and the markets are always changing and stuff like that. But I am very tempted to tell you that at least for a short while, you can set it and forget it if that's what you want to do, if you do it right. Right. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I just had a really good thought that I got to write down because this is this thought that just came to me is awesome. Well, I, I want to know. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to kind of, um, restate what you just said and I'm going to say it like this what we've created and what we're teaching is relationship funnels and it's a content funnel with my whole slant on what a transactional relationship should start with which is the actual relationship we're going to use our personalities along with the info about what we do and how we do it and who we do it for in that content funnel to where when the person comes out the other end right? The few that come out the other end that are like, I want it. I need it. I like you. Here's my money. Where do I put it? Um, they have to qualify themselves against you as a person. So you know that nine times out of 10, when you're getting on the phone with somebody that's gone through that process, they know 
who you are and it's a really easy vetting process on your end to determine, okay, Bob, are you going to be like this? Nope. Are you going to be like this? Nope. Are you going to be like this? Nope. How about this? Yep. That's me all day long. Okay, cool. We can work together. Here's how we get started. That's the <laughs> purpose, right? So the thought that I just had when you were saying that was this conversation that we're putting up and we're automating, right? So that conversation is what they have to go through before they get to us. And we want to deal with people mainly because it's a time issue and a headache. We want to do, deal with people that are like, I want it. I need it. I know how much it costs. I like you. Where do I put my money? We don't want to deal with all the other people that aren't all of those pieces. Yeah. So the relationship funnel or the content funnel is the entirety of the conversation you could have with somebody who knows nothing about you and nothing about what you do and how you do it and all of that. And depending on where they're at on the awareness scale determines where they go through that conversation. Mm -hmm. It just, it helped me um, break loose a thing that I've been thinking about the last few days. Ruben asks, <clears throat> hunt a content funnel. Yes. <laughs> it is a content funnel and it is a relationship funnel and that the current treasure hunt is it's a bunch of different things it's a relationship funnel it's an example of a content funnel it is a qualification process from a sales guy it is moving the free line it's a course in and of itself it gives you several options to get more from us right? Some paid, some not. Yes. It's a content <laughs> funnel and it's fucking badass if, if, if I don't say so myself. It is. For anybody who hasn't gone through the treasure hunt yet, please do. I just went through it yesterday. <laughs> Thoughts? Excellent work. Thank I think you. I'm going to go through it again because I kind of rushed through it the first time and I'm like, I want to go back through it again and like spend time on it. And then take it apart, put it back together. I like to study mm -hmm. what other people are doing that I respect in the field. Um, Ruben asked a question up here that we, that we skipped. How many platforms should I be creating content for? Listen, here's what's important, in my opinion, as far as how many platforms you should be creating content for. Um, you should, there is a balance of, Where's your audience active and looking for you? Okay. And where are you able to wear your best suit and come out as your best self? Um, I really love Facebook because everyone's market is on Facebook. Everyone's audience is on Facebook. Landon brought up a really great point the other day in our last interview that we did in my group. And he said, everyone's audience is on Facebook, but that doesn't mean that their intent on Facebook is to get to you. So you want to consider that. But I love Facebook because it's multimedia. You get to put out whatever kind of content you want. If you want to write, then write. If you want to do video, then do video. If you want to do audio, you can do audio now. Like everything, everything is, you're capable of doing everything here. And the algorithm is awesome. It works with you if you know how to use it. Um, how many platforms? Start with just one. Master one thing. Okay. You don't need to be, the quickest way I see people like run out, burn out, is when they try to master like a million different platforms at once. Um, I'd say at least at minimum for contingency, make sure you have an email list at minimum because you, you want to be able to own your audience, so to speak. But other than that, master one platform. We're able to do that nowadays and like be perfectly successful. And then once you grow, you master that thing, then start to branch out, increase your brand visibility, your brand presence. Nailed it. <laughs> I'm not even going to add anything to that. You, you crushed that. Um, <clears throat> in fact, I'll probably pull that piece of audio out and I'm going to use that in the course with, <laughs> with another piece. Um, back up here, BS yes, question for content funnels. How do you distinguish between cold and warm traffic when building your content funnel? Oh, now you're getting into questions that are, that are like in the course. Mm -hmm. And here's, here's what I'm going to say about that. You've got, you've got basically four different kinds of traffic. Okay. And it's all on their own awareness path. And I'm going to break it down like this. You have people in your marketplace that aren't even aware that they've got an issue or a want that you can solve. 
The next group of people are, they're aware that they've got an issue or a want, but they don't know that there's even solutions for it. The third group is, they're aware of the issue and the want and that there's solutions, but they don't know that you are a possible solution to that. And then that's the fourth one. The fourth one would be the the fast lane or the, the easiest ones to help get up to speed because they know all of the other pieces and just not you. They are the easiest people to get your message in front of. And to answer your question, B, the way you do that part of it, that's the ad, okay? That's the lead magnet. And so let's break it down like this. You've got one big relationship funnel, right? And you've got at least four different versions of your lead magnet out there in the marketplace that are doing the fishing for you. And they're bringing people into different parts of that relationship funnel based on where they're at on their journey. (laughs) <laughs> if that didn't blow your mind, then, then move on little doggy, because that's like, that's the whole key to marketing. <laughs> that's the whole key. There was a question up here. I saw my name. What do you see? John Jones says, Tori, what do you see as more important when putting content out there? Grammar or personality? Both. So here's the deal. Language was created for a reason, whether you speak English or otherwise, but this group, we speak English here. So the English language was created for a reason. It was created to accurately and precisely communicate how you feel on the inside to those around you. If you have poor grammar, you can't necessarily communicate that. It fucks up your message. Grammar, grammar is there for a reason. It's so that you can express yourself. Um, Language is the tool that you use to put your personality on the table. So I think they're both important. Focus mm-hmm. on both. Yep. Now, to add a little piece to that, you guys all in our world who have been orientated and acclimated to the way that I speak, you guys dig it. It's one of the things that differentiates me, right? Well, check this out. In our messages out there in the marketplace to cold traffic who don't know me yet, I don't like pour that on real heavy, right? I'm not going to use stuff like awesome sauce and douche canoe and all of those words where they're like, what the fuck does this mean until they've come into my world a little bit, Mm -hmm. right? Punctuation's huge. I'm going to go the other, I'm going to go the other route though. Um, just to fuck with Tori a little bit. I'm all (laughs) about grammar and I'm all about punctuation and it does irritate me when shit's not right, but I'm not hardcore on that like people who write like you and ash for oh i'm not hardcore on it well for me it's all personality and then it should be the grammar and the punctuation should grammar is kind of a given it should be grammatically correct punctuation (laughs) to an extent yeah that's my opinion but here's so the most important thing is that your message comes off clear. That's it. If you fuck up your and your, but people still get it, there's actually, aren't there like studies done or something? Copywriters talk about this all the time where mm-hmm. it's actually more relatable when you fuck up yep. some spelling, some grammar here and there, here and there. Don't sprinkle it in all throughout, but here and there. Okay. Um, because everybody makes those mistakes, right? Siri yep. fucks with everybody equally she does not discriminate so when we when people see siri fucking with you they're like haha she got you and it's okay um but it's still important for you to just make sure that you're communicating clearly otherwise if your message is lost right then you're not going to be able to create that connection with your audience that's really the key that's the priority there Mm -hmm. so i'm not like i'm not a stickler about it but if somebody makes too many mistakes in a piece of content, then I'm like, come on, man. Like, let's do better. <laughs> there's, okay, there's, there's a difference between writing like a third grader and writing like a 10th or 11th grader. I mean, then there's a huge fucking difference, right? Ain't nobody buying your shit if it's written like a third grader, unless you're selling to third graders. And guess what? They don't have credit cards, <laughs> right? Um, Amy Starr said, and a topic so epic it broke the internet. <laughs> yep, that that's that's the case for sure. Um, 
Let's see here. Emilio says use Grammarly at minimum. So yes, you guys can use Grammarly. So that's a Chrome plugin. It'll help you. You can use spell check. <laughs> you can use, um, I really like the Yo for anybody who's writing like long form content. If you have a WordPress website, even if you don't use it, I still have mine just so when I want to, when I'm writing long form stuff, I can hop in there. I can use the Yoast SEO tool, not for SEO, but because they have a readability, it has like a readability tool in there to help you with like your run-ons and your passive voice and things like that, that I'm honestly, admittedly, really terrible with looking out for because I just write what I feel. Um, and so it helps me make my, it helps me really make my message more concise whenever I'm writing a more complex piece. So those are, those are like my back pocket tools. Yep. Really a lot. Let's, uh, let's get into a little bit more of the, heady high level stuff about why content funnels and why relationship marketing. And I'm going to spark this next part of the conversation with this. We are now fully in the relationship economy when it comes to marketing and sales. And if you don't believe me, go try and sell something to the millennial crew, right? <laughs> I explained this to Ash last night um, or the night before we were talking about marketing and advertising. We in our generation, somewhere between 35 and let's call it late third, late forties. We grew up with commercials on TV, like all the time. We didn't have TiVo and shit you could like record stuff with and, and rewind. Right. And so we were, we grew up kind of irritated with that. Like listening to the radio, every other song, you got to listen to like three minutes of advertisement. Okay, cool. We are now like, as we grow up, we become more and more and more of the buying power and therefore advertisers have to adjust because we don't buy Tide Pods because they put it on a fucking TV commercial, right? <laughs> when we get down to our level where we're dealing with, you know, a half a dozen clients a month to a hundred clients a month and we're marketing and advertising, the messaging that we use has to be different than what it used to be take that into the next, the next entire marketplace, the millennials, they grew up in a place where that kind of stuff didn't really exist at all, even because they had the ability to, you know, record TV shows and then go back, no commercials, fast forward through them. Even they're like hardwired to not be affected in, in an advertising world where they're advertised to when they buy they go find a thing that they want and they buy it. So content funnels and relationship funnels, the way you and I are using them are designed to build that relationship with somebody that real know, like, and trust around a topic they're interested in and not even really ever have to sell to them. Mm -hmm. Right? So in our building content funnels, what is the biggest reason we're doing that? Why are we doing that? Why are we building content funnels? The number one reason I build content funnels is because, and this is like totally personal for me, I like to, I'm a perfectionist when it comes to my messaging. I grew up that way. Um, I've always written. And one thing about writers is that when you write, you have the ability to go back and edit and edit and edit and make it perfect. It's one of the reasons I love marketing as well because you go back and you test and refine and you test and refine and you test and refine. I really want to create the perfect message. And by the perfect message, what I mean is I really want to create a message. I really want to craft my message in a way that resonates to people's core, not just so that I can grow my business and stuff. I really get a kick out of fucking helping people. Like when my students come up to me and they're like, yo, I, try, I did this and it worked. Or even when people who aren't my students yet and they come up to me, they're like, oh, I tried your lead manual and it worked. They would have never tried it if my message wasn't impactful enough. Um, and so I really liked, I really believe in the power of words, honestly. Like, I really think that sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me is a load of fucking horseshit. I really believe that words are some of the most powerful things on this earth. That's why people are waging wars over what's better, the Bible or the Quran. Like, it's all about words. Um, so that's why I create content funnels. It's really personal. <laughs> <laughs> From a strategic level, it's because, and when you're talking about millennials, um, the driver there is that, I don't know, the way I see it is, 
advertising and marketing used to be quick. It used to be like not quick for the people who are creating the message, but like quick for us, like 20 seconds, QVC, I'm on the phone, buying whatever. Um, it didn't really take much persuasion, it took a lot of curiosity. People really took people at face value a lot more. And then out came all of the shitheads who saw how quick and easy it was to persuade people to do things. And um, people stopped believing. And so now everyone's jaded. Millennials are very jaded. And we're like, we know that the scammers are out there, number one. Number two, we really have very organic values of I want to buy into a company that I actually believe in. I want to buy into a company that actually respects me and isn't going to sell me some horse shit. And so I'm going to get to know them a little better. I'm going to do my research and what they're researching is what the fuck do you have to say? What do you stand for? What are your values? What's your philosophy? What do you do in the world? What is your impact? And all of that is communicated in a message, which is your content. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I'm going to say the exact same thing very short. In a very short advertisement message, you typically convert about 3% of your total 100% possible conversion, which means that all of the money, 97% or better, is on the long tail, right? So it's not right then their quick and dirty advertisement. It's what could be in building a relationship. The second piece to that is, is I don't fucking like dealing with people that I don't like dealing with, period. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> That's like my whole basis of the way I do sales. And so if I can do everything I can to qualify all the people out that I don't want to deal with, all of the people that really dig what I have to say about the thing I talk about, I really get along with. Yeah. Right. So it's all about higher quality clients for me and way fucking more money. There's a reason that the long game always wins. Just it, it's silly that there are people that are like blasting people in DMs. Fuck it. Like it's hilarious because it happens every day to me because the group and it's like, man, if you only knew, if you only had any idea how bad I want to buy that thing, but you're the last fucking person I'm buying it from. Oh, when I've, so started nice. telling, I've started telling people who pitch me, if I'm not, if I don't completely ignore your message, if your message caught my attention enough for me to read it, I'm still not going to buy from you, but I'm going to pitch you right back in the same asshole manner that you just pitched me. And I'm going to say, bro, buy my course. It'll teach you how to do this better. <laughs> That's funny. What I've started doing is I've, I've started just telling them, thanks. I didn't know that this was, was an option for me but I don't buy from people that do it this way, but now I'm going to go Google somebody else that I can buy it from. Have a nice day. Ah, that's you want to learn one. how to do this the right way? Getting clients without being salesy. Search it on Facebook. Maybe we'll let you in. Like, <laughs> I'm not even kidding. That's damn near verbatim my message. I'm an asshole sometimes, I guess. My inner child is a mean little fucker, especially <laughs> when I'm not eating, right? Like if I'm hangry, who? Somebody make land and some duck eggs. Right? Ash, what's funny is, is Ash made me eggs and bacon before this. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> Yay, Landon. Yep, totally. What's up, Mike Mack in the house? Cool. Looks like we're, I mean, people are still watching us, so it can't be that bad, but it it's too bad that this, this Friday Night Live was not as smooth as they normally are. I know. Let me That's right. I get the recording of it. Yeah. I want to have a really great filter to move out the riffraff and help people who are there to be helped. Well, Monica, you've been around in our world for a while. Here's my sales pitch. We have a course that'll teach you how to do that. It's a thousand bucks. You're more than welcome to buy it. There's no, it's closing in 22 hours and 35 seconds, scarcity bullshit. It's there if you want it. <laughs> if I'm hungry, oh, you better stay out. I know that's right. We have this bed, possibly. <laughs> That's funny. How can you use a content funnel to build a group's membership? Good question. A lot of different ways. Mm -hmm. um, 
Go ahead. Were you going to say something? Just real quick. Just like the blogging topic a few minutes ago, right? A content mm -hmm. funnel is not just content that is like written and created out there, right? Mm -hmm. Tori being on my stage in front of my audience in a video interview is part of a content funnel, right? For those of you that don't know Tori before tonight and you like her, you're going to go join her group. Is that not a content funnel? Yep. Ooh. It is. It's just content created in a manner that strategically guides, strategically, yeah. strategically attracts and guides your audience to where you want them to be, which should also align with where they want to be. Those, those should both be the same thing. Right. Um, so yeah, this is a part of the content funnel. Basically, if you want to grow your group, your group is a part of the funnel. All you really have to do in order to grow your group is do things like this. You just have like an outreach portion of the funnel where you go out, you gain exposure, and then you funnel people back to your group by having a call to action and say, hey, yo, go join my group. Um, <laughs> that's, that's kind of it. Or you can name drop it like we've done here a few times. <laughs> Right. And you do that by the main topic of tonight's call, influencer marketing, right? Go find some strategic partners and get on their stage doing interviews with them. Yep. Uh, our group's over 10,000 people, right? Like organically we're growing as fast as possible, but that doesn't mean I'm not, I'm not paying somebody to get me podcast spots to grow our presence, right? Still doing a bunch are, of it. You guys are over 10,000 people. Congrats. Yep. Thanks, That's a huge dude. amount. <laughs> yep. Um, Mike says that we're good. He's been able to hear everything tonight. Awesome. Cool. Where uh, do you get your inspiration for content? Everything is content. I didn't, I didn't coin that, or at least I wasn't the first person who I heard that from. Kim Doyle said that once, and it stuck with me forever. Everything is literally content. Like I could probably pick apart maybe a hundred things that we've said here in this interview that's on, that's on a topic that aligns for both Landon and I and take it and write a short post on it in my group tonight. Um, everything is content. And so what I do is I'm active with my audience. I'm active in my sphere, in my, in my professional world, talking to my students, talking to my group members, talking to my peers, right? Talking to my strategic, to my, talking to my strategic partnerships, but talking to the, the, my friends, the people in the, in the space that I've surrounded myself with. And um, once you learn to build your network in that way and, and create an audience, you'll find like little breadcrumbs all over the place of content that you can create. And not all content has to be a thousand, three thousand words. Some content that's really impactful can be one fucking sentence. Landon does it all the time. Mark also does it very well too. He, he like has his little morning posts and they're all like so cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. But everything is content. You just have to, you just have to learn to look for it. That's it. Nikki being a realtor, I am wondering what kind of group I would be building. Just one that puts info about buying and selling homes, have a lender or other partners do a live. Before you go down that rabbit hole, Nikki, I'm going to say this, building a group, really building a group and doing it right really is only done for two main reasons. One, in my opinion, there's other opinions on this. It's not fucking easy to do a Facebook group. When you're dealing with a bunch of other human beings, it's a lot to go into it. You do it for two reasons. You do it, one, to really solidify your position in a marketplace or in a vertical as an authority so that when you start running paid traffic to an offer, that structure that you've created, that, that base of evangelists support you out in the wild. And then the second reason is, is if you are just absolutely in love with the topic and you want to talk to people that are also in love with that topic, and it has nothing to do with business. In my opinion, those are the only two reasons you should do a Facebook group. I agree. Just the tip, just for a minute. Yep. 
Now, Nikki, I'm not saying you shouldn't do a Facebook group, <laughs> but my uh, what I've seen over the last 12 months being a, a Facebook group owner within our council, there's four of us that do this, but in the last 12 months, my, my view of this is about 98 out of 100 Facebook groups should not have been created to begin with. Yeah. Right? The exodus started last summer. And it's just going to continue because it's not a, it, it's not a joke. It's not build it and they will come. It's not build it and they will pay. There's a lot of other pieces that go into it, but for sure, if you have the, um, if you have the right ingredients to do the thing, Oh boy, it's amazeballs. Just going to say that. Yeah, it is. Cool. Well, you guys got any more questions for us? As the elders gonna... say, burn. Yep. <laughs> um, we've gone an hour with tech issues and all. I still show more than 20 people on. Um, we, Tori, you and Kim are going to be joining me for FNL next week. Mm -hmm. We kind of overgave. Like, I feel like maybe there's some things that we talked about tonight. Maybe we shouldn't have gone into as much depth. <laughs> Do you guys have any questions? I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to leave this decision totally up to Tori on whether we call it or not. And I'm good with either because you know, I can do F and L for like five or six hours straight. Right. I'm not, I cannot party for that long with you. <laughs> Um, what was your favorite piece of content you ever put out, Tori? Um, that's a good question. Hmm. I don't know. There's a piece, there's a post that I actually, I'd probably say out of all the content that I've ever written, I still love this one post that I wrote for HuffPost. Um, it, what's the title of it? I think you've seen it, Landon. It's about honesty. It's your baby. You can't even remember the baby's name. That's funny. I know. That sucks. <laughs> I gotta look it up. <laughs> I'm going to look it up. I'm going to come back to that question. Um, there was another question down there, though, I think. Let's see. Where can I find what are the right ingredients? Oh, for doing a Facebook group? Hmm. Mm -hmm. Well. <laughs> What's up, Ben Perry in the house? Ben, FYI, we've been having two issues all night. Um, ben Perry. Yep. Um, the the right ingredients. Okay, cool. You've got to be okay with being a performer, right? You've got to know your topic really, really well, or you've got to have an insane amount of passion about your topic that you can be the end all be all curator in that space. So you got to be able to perform to lead that culture until it kind of it, it takes your persona and the way you do things and begins to roll with that on its own right or you end up being like the one awesome band that you and your three buddies from high school did and you've got nine favorite songs and there's like four <laughs> people in the bar right <laughs> there's no reason to do that um really it comes down to your ability to lead and speak on the topic that you're talking about in a way that is vastly different than how everybody else is doing it. Yep. We're sales and marketing here. We do it completely fucking different than everybody else. That's why it's working. Right. Yep. So that blog post it's on Huffington post and it's titled honesty, which really in it for you and personal growth and business. And I actually think I copied and pasted that into a note here on Facebook for anyone who wants to hop onto my profile. Probably one of my favorite pieces of content that I've ever written. It's definitely up there, top three. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mike says, when you build your page, do you recommend going broad or more targeted? <clears throat> you need a blue ocean, right? Okay. So the deeper, darker blue ocean you can find the longer term sustainable it is and the more easy it is to become the end all be all to your ability in that niche as narrow as you possibly can, because you can go way deep in that. 
Now, does that mean you don't at the very top of your funnel kind of be a little bit broad about the topic? No, we're broad about sales and marketing, but we go way into other topics, right? Mm -hmm. But once you kind of like find your bearing, you want to get very narrow for a very specific ICA because that's how it works. I agree. What else we got? Would you still say that content is king? Yes, I would. I'm not positive that Landon would agree with me on that, but I feel like content is king. <laughs> content as a whole is king, yes. And, and what I mean by that is as long as your content contains the right message and the right offer, and that's what you're calling your content, yes, that's king. Yeah. It's your content is is essentially your sales conversation, right? The sales mm -hmm. conversation is more than just the one last little sentence that here's how you get started or here's like, when do you want to get like, that's just one little sentence, right? The, the rest of the entire sales conversation is all the message, right? If you're going to talk about content in the, in this context as you're pre-selling and pre-framing somebody and then making an offer to them. Yeah. It's all content. Mm -hmm. Everything is content. Right. I also say everything is marketing. Mm -hmm. Marketing. <laughs> it's all interrelated. Um, Andrew says, Tori, are you solo in your group? Oh, he's saying that you have a council. So you have like a lot of backup for making this thing work. Um, and he's asking me if I'm solo because he hasn't created a group yet because he's a one man operation. I am solo. I do not have a team. Um, I function in my group much differently than how the gorillas function in theirs. The gorillas are hyper present in their group. I attract people who do not require me to be hyper present in my own. They're very happy when I show up. They're okay when I don't because they still have a lot to learn from and go back in the group um, on. Mm -hmm. When I show up, I tend to just drop a shit ton more value and action steps when I do. And then I fall off again. So that's kind of how I function. Um, there's also a lot of tips to <laughs> about running a group, study the Facebook algorithm. I'm not going to get into all that now because it's kind of in depth stuff. Study the algorithm. There's a way to appear to be much more present and active in your group than you actually are. There are some weeks where I spend on average about 15 minutes a day in my group and it still feels and looks like I'm in the group for, oh, I don't know, the majority of the day. I'm in and out of the group, but that's not necessarily the case. Mm -hmm. um, so there's some tricks of the trade that I've taken up to make up for the fact that I'm only one person doing the thing. Right. I'm going to give you guys a little something. The, the main big space that we're in, sales and marketing, is a very loud, crowded space, right? And we want a certain type of person to end up at the bottom of our funnel and purchase from us. And one of the ways that I go about accomplishing that is this fire hose information because the people that are high quality, meaning they'll take action and implement, they're like, okay, holy shit, this is nuts. Is there a way for me to get like step-by-step -step handheld through the process without having to drink from a fire hose? That's one of the qualifiers and that's one of the reasons we do what we do in the group the way we do it. Um, B, would you guys say a group is essential for growing an audience? Define that. Okay. <laughs> we're teaching a bunch of our students how to grow and build their audience and we're recommending they don't build a group. Um, it depends on the end goal of building an audience. If you're trying to get clients, a half a dozen to a dozen or two dozen a month or several dozen each quarter, it doesn't make sense to build a Facebook group. If you're going to do a course or you're going to do big group coaching or you're planning long-term and there's no reason you would ever shift your focus from your main topic, it may make sense. But I can tell you this, if your work day is already eight hours and you're going to grow a group the first six months, you're probably going to spend a couple too many hours a day to grow it the right way. That's my opinion. <laughs> 
Now, Tori has a slightly different way of doing it, but her avatar is also slightly different. And I would say that her avatar is not like the vast majority of people that we're all marketing to. Just an opinion. I have an interesting talent of attracting people who respect my time in private space because they understand that I'm introverted and I can't socialize with them 24 <laughs> seven. Right. And I really appreciate that about them. It's one of the reasons I love, I love them so much. They're my babies. Yep. <laughs> totally. Yeah. And Steph, Steph, you're right. Um, you might not need to help mo- help moderating until you reach about 1500. Yeah, totally. Um, I don't know. It depends. Like that depends if you're shit. Cause I'm not at 1500 yet. And I probably started to actually, I had moderators pretty early on, but I actually probably started to need help just because um, of the volume of interactions I was taking. And maybe I was off balance. Maybe I was having too many one-on-one conversations and I should have shifted my focus to doing more macro level and cutting off the one-on-one a little sooner. Um, but I probably started to need help moderating around 750. But one of my strengths is thus far being accessible. And I'm just starting to set boundaries on how accessible I make myself for one-on-one. And um, that really just started right around the time I hit a thousand members. I will also um, break it down like this. There's two reasons to have a group. Either you're really interested in the topic and all of the people that are there are, they're just like bonkers about the topic and they all kind of like do their own thing and everybody respects the space and there's not a whole lot of moderation to do. But if you're, if you're leading the group, a key metric is not necessarily how many people are in the group, but how many people are active in the group, right? Our group seems fucking bananas because we've got an active number of people in our group that some groups that are in the forties and fifties and sixties and, and higher don't have as active members, right? So 1500 active people in your group, if you're leading them on a thing, in my opinion, if you're going to, if you're really going to solidify that leadership and authority role, it's quite a bit of engagement. That's Mm -hmm. That's my opinion, right? Like I'm not God. I'm a God, but that's just my opinion. <laughs> she said, y'all never go away from my news feed. The gorillas own the news feed. You guys own the fucking feed. Yep. And it's because you guys have such a high act, like a high number of active members in your group. You guys are fucking all over the place. Amy Bernier's here. Hello. What's up, Amy? <laughs> yeah. Um, and, Part of that is by design. I mean, part of that is engineered, right? I mean, if if somebody is high quality enough as far as an ICA ICA of ours goes, they Mm -hmm. may shut off notifications to the group, but they're buying, right? Um, Mm -hmm. If somebody if somebody doesn't see you in their newsfeed, they forget about you, Um, and if they've forgotten about you it's kind of hard to stay in front of them. And if you're trying to stay in front of them so you can help them make the decision, yes or no, to buy the thing, like, mm-hmm. let's not forget, this is a business. We're going to fucking market to you, right? Like, there's a purpose to this. Yeah. If we're not in front of you, you forget about us. Amy. Amy. I love Amy. I do too. We were chatting earlier. Yep. What do you think the percentage is of free information you put out to the Facebook group versus what you put behind a paywall or charge for with the consulting call? That's a tough question for me to answer. Um, I don't know, Landon, you might have a number to go along with this. This is one of those... This is one of those questions that really, it, uh, it strikes the part of me that instantly starts thinking quality over quantity, quality over quantity, quality over quantity. Don't focus on that. Um, focus on the quality of information you're putting out on the front end is the quality of, your, of the information that you're putting in your content funnel, your group, whatever the case may be. Is it doing the thing that you want it to do? Is the quality of the stuff that you're putting behind the paywall doing the thing that you want it to do? 
period. End of story. The rest doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. The rest really matters. It's just not even worth focusing on. In my opinion, I feel very passionately about that. Landon, what do you think? I totally agree with that. And here's what I will say, Emily, to add to that. The info that goes for free is most of the what and most of the why and a little bit of the how. Yep. I say that all the time. Okay. We're the same person. We're twins. We are totally the same person. <laughs> And here's, here's why. Um, and when I say most of the what, most of the why, and a little bit of the how, what I'm talking about is somewhere between, I don't know, 70 and 90% of the what and 70 and 90% of the why, and a little bit of the how, somewhere between 10 and 15 or maybe 20%, right? Because people don't buy info. They can go buy, they can go get the info, buying it with their time. They can go Google all the stuff that any of us teach about. Yep. What do they want? They want to get around that corner. They want to get there faster. They want to get there because you have a perception about it that others don't. That how is what they buy so they can implement that, right? If you're talking about from a coach or a consulting standpoint and you're selling your knowledge and your your, your wisdom. It's the same thing. You talk about most of the, what most of the why and a little bit of the how, and then the rest of the, what the rest of the why and almost all of the how is behind the paywall. Does that make sense? Yep. Cool. I got so excited when you said that. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I was, I was asked a bunch early on why I, why I do so much free content in our group. And there's really two reasons for it. Um, For those of you who have not heard the term move the free line. Well, there's a lot of really, really, really low quality information in the space of sales and marketing. And then you pay a big dollar amount to get a little bit of stuff, right? I'd rather give you that little bit of stuff and you'd be like, Jesus, this is fucking insane. Like seriously, go through the treasure hunt. If you haven't gone through it, we could charge a grand for that all day long right? Just the info that's in the treasure hunt, right? Um, I've had a couple of coaches that teach similar stuff to that say, dude, like I charged $2,500 for that info. You just fucking gave away in your group. I'm like, yeah, I know. (laughs) They get through that and they're like, this is fucking amazing. Help me get to that next step. Cool. That's really expensive. You Mm -hmm. buy the course and go through it on your own and that's not, but you want to coach with me. It's expensive because my time's valuable to me. Yep. And then what happens is they're not, they're not questioning your worth anymore. At that point, they're like, okay, either I can afford it or I can't like they're already sold. Mm -hmm. Either I can afford it or I can't. And if I can't afford it right now, or if I don't have the money for it right now, I'm using really bad terminology that we're not supposed to use in entrepreneurship land with the right mindset. But if I don't have the money for it right now, then I'm going to do everything that I can to get it because I know that this thing is going to lead me to the right level. So at that point, it's not a matter of if it is a matter of when they're going to purchase this thing. Right. Um, really fucking important. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. I'm ready. You can't afford it. You You can afford anything you want. I feel bad that I said can't afford it in that hypothetical there because I don't like to put that terminology out there. Yep. I agree. Your self talk. Right. <laughs> let, let me get back to this thing. Relationships are the most important thing on the planet. And the one you have with yourself is the most important. The relationship you have with yourself is because of the self-talk that you have in your own head. Mm-hmm. For those of you that are watching, it's not that you can't afford it. You will afford whatever it is that you want to afford. Yep. And so my apologies for wording it that way earlier. That was out of habit, but Whenever you find yourself thinking, little side note, whenever you find yourself thinking, I can't afford that, reword that, add in the how. How can I afford that? And then figure out a solution and then go implement that to be able to afford the thing. We're entrepreneurs. The only thing we do in life is figure out what problems people are having and then create solutions for those problems. If we can't do that for ourselves, we're going to have a lot of fucking trouble being able to do it for somebody else, right? So if you have an issue with something that you want to afford in life. Say, how can I afford it? Create the solution. Go do it. Mm -hmm. Do you guys have any questions on influence or relationship funnels or content funnels? Yeah, because i got to hop off here probably in about eight minutes. Eight minutes. 
on the dot. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I feel like someone around here made a video about that topic in this group not long ago. Yes, Andrew, you are correct, my friend. Interesting way to position it. Yeah, what's up, Craig? Yep, yep. Cool. We're going to hang out for another minute or two, guys. Um, this is for you. Tori and I talk every other week in, in a coaching call. I pay her for one and she pays me for one. So her and I can talk about this ad nauseum. And oh, believe me, we do. And we strategize the fuck out of this. If you guys have yep. questions, ask. All right. What's the difference between relationship and content funnels? Really good question. So essentially, they're the same thing. They look like the same thing. Landon and I teach a little bit differently. Um, we teach something incredibly, incredibly similar. We both pretty much teach content funnels. Re Landon teach, teaches a relationship funnel. So the thing that he ultimately focuses on is your relationship with yourself and how you can use that to create relationships with the people that you want to work with. Um, I really focus on the message end of that. What exactly is it that you want to say that you mean to say, and how can you say that? And how can you say that in a way where it works and does the thing that you want it to do? Now, there's a lot of overlap there. In order to figure out the thing that you want to say, you have to know who you are and what you want. You have to know your audience. We both teach both of those things, ultimately, right? Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, did that kind of clear that up a little bit? Because they are very similar. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, trying to decide if I want to give this little nugget away or not. Um, I've, I've got like six minutes to like, let this marinate before I say it. And then we're going to end this. Um, yeah, it's interesting. Once this is done rendering, I'm going to go back and watch it and see if, if this has buffering issues in the replay. Um, I don't know if I want to give this away because it's just too good. I think, I'm, I think I'm going to hold on to this. Um, Tori, oh, now I want to know. <laughs> Tori, Tori <laughs> explained to you guys content funnels and um, you guys know why I use content funnels the way that I do. We, we both teach and use content funnels and there's a couple of, there's a couple of reasons and a couple of ways that I use content funnels that I'm going to save for either another day or just let it be in the course. Um, <laughs> because it's, it's working. It works. Content funnels are the bomb. Agreed. How many posts would you say should be the most amount for a funnel? <laughs> Alec, go back to when I, whenever you catch the replay, go back to when I was talking about quality over quantity there. Focus on the quality. I agree with, I agree with them, Landon. It's not fair. You got to spill the beans. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> How many posts would you say should be the most amount for a funnel wording wrong? But yeah, I would agree with what Tori just said. She talked about it um, back a little while ago. Um, Landon, earlier today, I ran across a piece of content where you said cross-platform funnels can be powerful. Would they all direct folks to a central area, for example, a Facebook group? <clears throat> Here you go. I'm going to give you guys some Gorilla Juice right now. It does not matter what platform you're on. What matters is that the intent of your marketplace to engage with your info with the intent to eventually buy is there. Everybody's marketplace is on Facebook, right? And the reason that we use Facebook, all of us, whether they're there with the intent, like you guys are here with the intent to buy our shit eventually, right? We're going to use Facebook whether it's for this market, you guys, or a market that their intent is on LinkedIn because everybody's on Facebook. And if we know who the fuck our ICA is, we can target them on Facebook. And then when they're on LinkedIn, we can retarget them around the entire web, right? Focus on one platform where your ICA has the intent to engage with you about the thing you sell, whether it's LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, doesn't matter. And then... Once you've got that nailed and it's locked down, by all means, use the other, use the other platforms 
so you can do the cross platform funnels. So for those of you that were paying attention or see this in the future, there is some huge gold in what I just said. <laughs> Amy, for God's sakes, Landon, spill it. Not fair. <laughs> hey, you know what? I'll tell you what, it's not very expensive. You can afford whatever it is that you need to afford. We teach all of this in the course. <laughs> right? And, and I totally feel okay doing that because oh. – we way over give, like we've really fucking moved the free line in this group. So if you want it, you're more than welcome to it. I wish Facebook live had a GIF option, LOL. Yep. So do I actually, wouldn't that be hilarious? <laughs> yeah, We'd have trouble that. through all the GIFs to find the actual questions because people would just go crazy. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Paloma would come in and start writing her questions with gifts. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It'd be like 19 of them in a row. And you'd be like, Fuck, I'm, I must have messed up one up there because now the question doesn't make sense. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> awesome sauce. All right. <laughs> She told a whole story with a slew of gifts and I happened to catch it at the beginning and it was fucking hilarious. I like caught it at the beginning and I just literally watched her post after post after post. I should have grabbed some popcorn. It was so good. I have been able to find answer to all my questions using the search option. It's the reason I'm here engaging in lives I usually never engage in. Awesome sauce. All right. I think everyone's good. Looks like. Oh, there's so much more coming. Holy shit. You guys, if you liked this, tune in next week, next Friday Night Live. It's going to be Tori Kim and I talking about um, content. So if you liked the topic tonight, we're going to, we're going to go into a little bit more of it next week. With that. Yeah, you guys are really into the content funnels topic, so you'll love next week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's going to be the bomb diggity. Same place, same time. And Kim is awesome for anybody who doesn't know Kim. Mm -hmm. insert bring it gif lol <laughs> awesome sauce tori say good night tori good night everybody I love peace you very out much. scouts <laughs> oh hey tori what's the name of your facebook group if they want to come hang out with you Oh, the name of my Facebook group is Content Mastery for Entrepreneurs. You can also go to my profile and check out my cover photo and just click on that and the link's right there. Or you can type in Constant Ma Content Mastery for Entrepreneurs in the search bar for Facebook and you can find me there. Um, really awesome group. I love the group. I love the people in it. And I love the people in this group. And I think that you guys would be very happy over there. You're more than welcome to join. Mm -hmm. Don't fuck around in our group though because I'll kick your ass. Because I'm in <laughs> All right. Peace out, Cub Scouts. Bye, everybody. That was awesome. Yeah, that was really good. Um, oh, the tech issues. <laughs> yeah, like what the fuck? At least it wasn't, it wasn't us. If other people were having issues with Facebook Live. Facebook has been crashing on my phone all day today and yesterday. So really? I was, yeah, bad. Huh. Maybe they're having like server problems. That's what that sounds like overall. Yeah, could be. The Facebook issue. Maybe one of their servers went down. Yep. <clears throat> um, I do have some gold about the, the relationship stuff. I will, as I continue to formulate it, I will share it with you the next time we talk. But basically it is, um, have you heard me talk about relationship builder sy systems or sequences like for email? Okay. Mm, just, just a bit about the soap sequence. Okay. So the guy who essentially created the soap sequence style email mm -hmm. on chaperone has also put that same thing into effect on websites and now he's teaching it. And mm -hmm. I've, I've followed him for a while and I, I follow another guy that follows him and essentially um, what they've been doing, what he's been doing is creating content funnels and it's all through, leading somebody through the process. Now here's my whole thing. It's all about relationships. Why? Because if somebody naturally relates to me, know, like, and trust, take care of themselves. I'm automatically persuasive to them. 
mm-hmm. which means I automatically influence them. So I don't have to use, I don't have to try and be persuasive or try and be influential because I already naturally am. But that is another layer that goes into the content funnels. You naturally have this, which is why you write the way that you write. But um, I'm going to continue to layer that on into our content funnels for the relationship funnel aspect of it because if they don't relate to me, they go the fuck away because I'm never going to be able to persuade them unless I hard persuade them, which I don't want to do, right? Mm-hmm. So by by using that relatability in the content funnels the way that I do, they're already primed like they're – It's that whole thing. You know, when you watch somebody's webinar, you go through somebody's sales letter and you're like itching. You like can't get your fucking wallet fast enough. Yeah. That's, that's the thing. And, and through natural relatability, it feels good while you're going through it. It feels good when you buy it and it feels good afterwards, which is that afterwards thing, because all of the stuff that we're selling is not the last thing we're going to sell to these people that buy. Right. And that's the purpose. That's where all the fucking money's at. This first thing they buy, thousand bucks, two hundred bucks, whatever it is, doesn't. That's nothing. Mm-hmm. You get somebody to stay with you three, four, five years. That's the tribe of a thousand people that buy all the shit that you. That's the whole point. That's where all the money's at. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cool. Your roommate's like, okay, get the fuck out of my bedroom. I want to go to bed now. I'm surprised she hasn't texted me. I wonder how high she is down there. <laughs> so, <laughs> when the I water's said eight, taking forever to boil. It's not on. <laughs> oh, fuck. When I, was, um, when, I said, when I said I have about eight minutes, I was worried that like she would like come up and come in and like do something foolish. So I was like, it's about that time. I'm getting nervous. But she hasn't even texted me yet. That's funny. But She's downstairs sitting in a chair looking at the wall and the fucking water's not turned on on the stove. <laughs> <laughs> I've never done that before, ever. Oh, man. She does. She's hilarious when she's high. First off, I've never seen. She has, She gets like a. She has like a placebo high before the high actually hits. Like as soon as she starts thinking about getting high, she starts acting high. It's so funny. She's such a fucking pothead, but only at nighttime though. Like she's perfectly functional. She has an awesome job. She works at Nationwide. She's a um, database engineer. I'm film every day. Totally cool. Totally fine. Actually pretty straight edge in like all things in her life. And then, like that eight o'clock period hits and she's like stoner time. I'm ready. <laughs> she's awesome. She's like my favorite person. But um, I'm gonna go ahead and hop off here because there is a slight chance that she is actually just patiently waiting for me to come down and I'm sure she wants to go to bed now. So I'm gonna let her in. <laughs> Thanks for doing this, Tori. All right. Thank you. It was awesome. Peace out, Cub Scout. Peace out.